Okay, so it's Saturday. I went to breakfast this morning with a group of my old co-workers and buddies, construction guys. Uh, my buddy Randall being one of them, and I told him I had to do this axle seal, and he said, well, why don't you bring it by my house and we'll do it. We can, uh, we can hang out, and at the same time, you don't have to kneel in the mud or, or on the stone or whatever. So I took him up on his offer. I said, yeah, I'll come hang out. So yesterday I went and bought the axle seal and uh, we're just gonna take a ride down there and I'll show you how to do this. It's, it's, to me it's boring, but for other people they like this stuff because they don't know, you know what I mean? So I have to remind myself all the time that just because I think something might be boring, one of my viewers might be interested in it. So I'm gonna film it anyways for somebody that might be interested in it. This is what I always talk about when I say I live in a crowded area. Look at all the lots. Tiny house lots. That's why I'm not getting rid of the six-wheeler. In case I gotta do work in a neighborhood like this. Because it's, it's most of the neighborhoods are like this. So, this is where I live. Well, this is where he lives. Oh, you want back up on the steel plate? Yeah, then the, then the jack. We can use the jack to take the drum off and stuff and take killing ourselves. You need a hand with that? Nope, I do it every day. <sighs> All right. What do you think I am? Some type of pussy? No. All right, we're on the steel plate. Um, those came off pretty easy, huh? Bionic fingers. Huh? Bionic fingers. Bionic fingers. Pinion seal needs to be fixed next. After I get the wheel off, I'll jack up this more so the fluid runs back towards the pumpkin so we don't lose all the fluid. The uh, next thing I gotta do is that pinion seal. Push it on again. No problem. We got it. Okay. Yep, gotta get them hot and warm, cold. Never sees them. Probably should put these back here because that lift axle likes to drop down, drop down after a while. I'm gonna chuck the wheels. Yeah. Chuck blocks. All right, let me release the brakes here.
You gonna cage it? Yep. So, for those of you that don't know, there's a T-style bolt goes in the end, and then you just cage it. Then you can set the brakes so we don't have to worry about those. Yep, a lot of brake cans when you buy them come with a cage bolt. Guys like us always save them off of uh, old uh, cans when we get rid of them. So then we can release the brakes, but this one will be held by the bolt open. But she's definitely been leaking. Yeah. So a lot of tow truck guys will carry like a whole bunch of spare cage bolts. With all the different sizes too. Yeah. Because if you don't release the brakes, you won't get this drum off. So, that's that. Now I'll go, I'll go pull the brakes. Okay, so the reason why I'm going to jack this up more is you see this tube, axle tube? It's hollow. So you want to jack this up so when you take this hub off that's full of oil, you don't um, have the fluid run out of it. It'll run back towards the pumpkin. Because if you had this lower or level, it just pours out of here. A lot of it. And then you got to replace it. And, you know, it's not exactly cheap either. So, I'll get this until that axle tube has a decent angle backwards on it. That way it runs all that fluid back into the pumpkin. Alright, we'll see what that does because I don't want to go too much higher. And then, you want to put a jack stand under it, or are you happy with it? I'm happy with it, too. It's fine. I just won't put my toes under it. So, first of all, Randall, how many years were you a fire truck mechanic for the fire station? 39 years. 39 years. And what did you do before that? I worked at a GMC dealership. Heavy, heavy trucks. For those of you that don't know, like, GMCs used to have dealerships for large trucks. Like, uh, brigadiers and generals and stuff. You drive a wrecker now, too. I also did that when I was a kid. Even though you're supposed to be retired. But can anybody really retire nowadays? Only the guys that own excavators. <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> no, we can't. See these studs? Some of these are in, uh, not in enough. Think I should jack it more? Think I got enough angle? Gotta do a little more. Yeah. Huh? That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Got a good angle on it. Alright. Oh yeah, that's a 46. That's definitely a 46, dude. It's heavy. The outer ring has those tabs right there. You get a bend over, it locks this nut. Looks like somebody's already used the chisel on this nut right there uh he's trying to find a socket for this because there is a big axle nut socket for this but it looks like somebody's already used a chisel on this so we'll uh so we got this just to bend the tabs over but looks like somebody was using it on that too and there's two nuts here that lock the bearings and the hub on and then the tab that folds over keeps the nut from moving It doesn't take much to get the tabs to bend over, but it's good to use something wide, wider than, like if you got a big screwdriver, that's fine. Just make sure it's a big one because those tabs are just tin. 
you can cut them. I've actually cut them before with a skinny screwdriver. So, look at those relics. And they came over on the Mayflower. They what? They came over on the Mayflower. They came over on the Mayflower. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, my son has all my other good ones like the one I had before. Yeah. His son's a diesel truck technician too, so he has some of his stuff at his house also, so. Uh, that's why I always tell my wife, I don't want to hear it when I gotta buy tools. It's nice to buy tools. Oh, yeah, you want me to hold it in for you? Nope. Need a bigger bar, hold on. There you go. There, it's just slightly stuck. Let me get one. That's what she said when the bed broke. <laughs> she never said any such thing to you. She said, get out of the room, weirdo. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let me get this apart and then I'll show you. Yeah, I got it. So we use this crow's foot to get this off because this center right there um pin peg whatever you want to call it goes in the center of that keyway right there and then the holes in this ring go on that peg of the inside nut I'm trying not to, my friend. Or maybe? Uh, it keeps sliding again. Hold on. That's what she said when the bed broke. I'm dude, I'm telling you, she didn't say that when the bed broke. She said, get out of the bedroom. Alright. Bearings. They look good. No, they don't. They don't look good at all. Let me clean them up. No, this is chunked. It's chunked. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, well, you better call them up. Call up your man. Yeah, it sucks. Probably where the seal's going. All right, two hours later, I just got back. Uh, looks like he's been hot pressure washing the uh, parts. He has uh, hot water hooked up to it. Um, yeah, two hundred dollars later for bearings and races. So I gotta pop this race out pop the other one out, put the new ones in, which I hate doing. Normally if the race is good, I'll just replace the bearing, which I don't know. Maybe we might do that. I don't know. And then I got to do something about that. That's all silicone. These idiots tried to seal that with silicone instead of, you know, getting the right seal. I brought my uh, grinder with a wire wheel. I'm gonna try to wire wheel that silicone off of there. 
I don't understand why they did this. You cut it off with a torch. They just had a lousy torch guy. Yeah, the torch guy sucked. Big time. I've, I've seen them take the nuts and roll the nuts on. This is crazy. What makes me nervous is, is now that I know they did this wheel, this summer I gotta I gotta go take all the wheels off and do all the other ones. Cause, Cause I can't trust that they did all the other ones correctly. Then them to, then for them to gouge that with the bear, the sealed surface gouge that. They hit it with a hammer. That's a hammer mark, like that one. Beating on it. They were cutting here. They were cutting here. Beaten there, beaten there, right in line with the cut. I mean, that's just, it's just stupid. Well, I mean, I knew what I was buying. Because, I mean, uh, yeah, but that's, that's, again, that's just people that are trying to make it work and they don't know what they're doing, that's all. Yep. Well, whatever. It is what it is. You know is. what I mean? They're just trying to make it work, trying to make a living. They're probably in a backyard just like this. Yeah, but. This is a much smarter backyard, <laughs> right? No, just a little, bit more experience. a little more experienced backyard. Okay, I take that back. Not smarter, just more experienced. You're right. If we were smarter, we would be uh, sitting somewhere having a drink. Would be someplace where it's warm. Yeah, down south. Dry. The Caribbean. I'll have to re-grease this after. Yeah, the torch guy was terrible, huh? That's that one. Time to flip it. Probably had to replace it some with that bearing rope. Probably. Okay, so I don't have anything to drive the races in. It is Saturday. I can't go get anything. So we've been putting them in with the brass punches. You don't want to use a steel punch because you'll scratch it. Uh, the other side's already in. It's already seated. You can see down in there. And um, I forgot to turn the camera on. But yeah, so brass. Don't use steel. So, lightly started tapping it in with this brass hammer all around, just lightly, and then switched over to the punch. If you use steel, you'll, you'll scratch it. That's it. That's seated. I'm gonna flip it over just to make sure so I can look in there. So, let me pull this out. And then, go 
look down in there I can see I don't know if you can but it's tight all the way up so we're good but I'll give it one more with the small one just for good luck That should be good. Now what I gotta do is blow off, I gotta blow off all the little brass chips because that's how it works. The brass indents in chips before the steel does. So, the reason we're getting new bearings, this is the outside bearing, and see that right there? That bearing is toast. Um, where is it? Come on. This one's no good, too. Uh, but look at, see how that right there is all gouged up? Um, I did pull the magnet on this truck when I was in Florida and it had a little bit the magnet on the rear end which is the plug magnet and it had a little bit of little flaking to it and I didn't really wasn't too concerned with it but I knew at some point I was gonna find something so this is what it was this bearing is is gone so it's not supposed to look like that so Here's a new bearing. Nice. Now some guys will pack these full of grease. You don't want to do that with this because this is not this is an oil bath rear end. So it's gear oil. It's not grease. I've seen on YouTube and Instagram and stuff where people overseas, I don't know where they're at, but even though it's an oil bath, they still pack the the uh, bearing with grease, but we're not going to do that cuz that's incorrect. So what we are going to do is we're going to do a little bit of wheel bearing grease on the outside. See the tub of wheel bearing grease here? Wheel bearing grease. Just a light film though. We're not trying to fill the rear end with grease. Just almost like, like a packing. You know, like if you were to pull this out of the package. You know, it's just a light film. You shouldn't really... You know, and then, you know, but I saw, I saw a video where a guy had a glob of like grease you would grease your machine with and he was packing it. You, you that, I would not do that. And then, yeah, just like so. See how you can't see it? You don't want to see it because if you see it, that's too much. This is just so when the truck starts moving until the oil gets in here, you don't run it dry. It's just a light film, not... pre-lube. Yeah. We're going to pre-lube it with the gear oil also. Just a little bit. Like so. And that should be good and then a little bit on my finger on the race so I'll take a little bit of that put it on the race drop the bearing in like so and now we gotta press in the seal so what I like to do is just a drop on the rubber just like so so you don't rip it get the rubber a little wet It'll dry after, but. Do we have a seal press punch? Or brass hammer again? I got the ones for the back that we sent to them. 
his son's got the um, other one. Like I said, his son's a diesel tech, so he has the other seal. The he has the seal press, so I'm gonna use this flat piece of steel. This works fine. I wonder if that's it. It's gotta be it, huh? Yeah. Oh, is the right there? What? Yeah. But that's it, it stopped. Yeah, yeah, you don't wanna go here. No, we that we wanna go on further than they had it anyways. Well that that lip right there is is done. Is, okay, yeah, right. This is different than my peat though. I'm just gonna give it a little more love. That should be enough. Yep. The seal on my peat sits flat. It's weird. Different seal, huh? Yeah, well, some seals have internal spin and other seals go spin on the tube. Yeah, the peat must have a internal seal. All right. We got to clean up a little bit of this flammable stuff and then I'm going to weld this gouge and then try to sand it down. So what that is is this spun a bearing at some point uh you know for those of you that have been following the channel for a while i bought this truck in florida you know used vehicle you never know so what happens is you spin a bearing and then the bearing from friction welds itself to the tube and then some guy who's not good with a cutting torch comes along and he torches the bearing off which i never like to do i take a whiz wheel and i cut almost through it on multiple sides and then what I do is I take an air chisel and I stick it in the, the cut and I just break the break the what's re, uh, left. I, do, I don't use a torch. A lot, so a lot of guys use a torch and they melt it off. But somebody right there, they hit the oxygen button and gouge it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to machine it back. Because if not, i got to rip this whole axle out of this truck. And it's not worth my time to do that just for a little bit of that. Because the bearing was sitting on there okay. Say that again. As far as I know, there's companies that will weld that new tube on right on the truck. He says there's companies that will come and weld that new, uh, will cut that off and weld the new uh, end on the, the tube right on the end of the axle. However, I don't want to pay for that right now. Maybe down the road, but as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're okay with that, right? I'm okay with it the way it is. Well, he's okay with it the way it is. I want to weld it. I want, yeah, I I, you like know. It, but... but I want to I want to weld it and clean it up. I mean, it was fine. The bearing was fine on there, but I'm not I'm not happy with it. I don't, so. Yeah, we really don't know. He said we're not 100% sure. It could have been why the bearing let go, but the outer bearing let go. The inner bearing I think looked fine though. Well, the outer bearing gets shit from the rear end first. Right. This is the inner bearing. I don't, it was changed. See, they might not have changed the other one when they did the inner one. Right. Maybe they did. Just change. Just change the outer one. It didn't change the other one. No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh. Yeah. This inner bearing looks pretty good. Maybe it's new. I don't know. But I'm not. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not gonna take a gamble on it though. Paperweights now. Look at the seal. They put silicone on the seal. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. So, yeah, they thought silicone was gonna like help it. Well, I don't know. They just didn't want to change it. It was probably the guy who bought the truck off of silicone. This just to sell it. Whatever. Well, here goes something.
windy. A little bit of wind. Got to shield the wind. One more. Let's see. No, it's perfect. I don't want to get it too hot like you said before. Too much heat on it, you know what I mean? Not that, you know, they didn't do it. <laughs> All right. All right, I believe. All right, I did that little bit there because when they were smacking here, they smacked, they smacked right there and dented it. So I have to sand it with the sander. So, all right. And I put the clamp here past the threads. Uh, that way, if, you know, it arced on the ground, it wouldn't mess up the threads. But now I'm going to put this back on and then do some grinding with the grinder. But we are just going to sand, you know, not really grind. Oh, this is a sanding disc, not a grinding disc. Very careful not to create a low spot or I'll have to add more that feels pretty smooth doesn't look like it but it's straight across And I'm, I'm just barely touching it. I'm not pressing hard. That feels good. That dent's gone. It's not sharp. There's a little spot there, but that's okay. Got a little divot right there but I'm gonna I'm gonna add to it probably right there and then right there Very, very low heat. This is set for like eighth inch steel. Cause we're only trying to add material. We're not we're not trying to get like a hot melt here.
Not bad, not bad. I'm not gonna worry about that divot. Cause I don't wanna take too much. Tight? Yeah, nice. Nice. Tighten it up nice. It'll crank it down. I'm gonna take the wire wheel. I got that dent out in the in the uh where the seal goes. Yep. But I'm gonna take the wire wheel and polish it now. It's open to Nice. Couple little splatters right there. I should take care of that for now we are not going to take care of that dent because the bearings back here from here to here is hollow it's inside it's all fluid in here it's like actually this far away from the hub so it goes seal rides on here inner bearing rides in here this section's hollow then outer bearing and then the threads is obviously the nut so all right that's that i feel good about that now that looks way better Stupid loud cars. All right, so I'm just gonna take this scotch bright and just kind of scuff up these shoes a little bit because they probably got glazed over. There's uh, quite a bit of shoe left, but I'm gonna have to get new ones because they are, you know, from pressure washing them and, and being soaked, they're really, I can't get any today, but I'm just gonna scuff them up, you know. It's still a little bit of life left, but not the greatest right there, but scuffing them up takes off the like glaze, you know, that the uh, fluid and uh, breaking naturally does, so. Normally I, I, I put these rollers, these springs and these rollers in before I do it. I've never done it this way. Well, that it's usually a hell of a lot easier. Okay, there you go. Boom. There it is. Done. No, what I mean is like normally I'll put those in there first, then clip the rear springs, flip it around, and then hook it. But whatever. All right. You do it both ways. Any which way, as long as it works. A little bit of bearing lock. Spin on the tube. That one was a low one. Yeah. You want me to lift that? Get that out of my way, old man. <laughs> Okay. 
So, when you put this nut on, it's important to have the tab nub that's on it facing out. So what we gotta do is we gotta crank this down all the way and seat this. And then turn it. I think it's gotta go more. I don't like how it's on that seal surface, but it looks like it's on there. I don't know. I don't think it's in enough. Hey. Okay, I put the drum back on before tightening the outer ring because I wanted to make sure that I was sucked all the way in. So what I did was put the drum on to make sure that the shoe and the old wear mark match in the drum. To make sure that, see that line, the wear mark? To make sure that that seal pressed all the way in and the bearing pressed all the way in. Cause I was a little nervous about it. So now that I know what we are all the way in where we were, I will put that nut on the outside and crank it down. The other reason why I know that we are all the way in is because that peg lines up at that hole and that tab lines up with the keyway. So we put this on next. And then remember our gouge that somebody had chiseled into there. This goes on next. And then we give it a little snug and then pull the tabs down. I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute because I need both hands. Okay. I got the outer ring tight, so now I'm going to take this crow's foot and uh, try to bend the tab out very gently because I don't want to rip the tab. That's that one. And there's that one. And that one. That one. On the bottom. Like so. And then that's it. The rest of them are on corners. So, you don't have to do all of them. You just gotta do some. We did more than they had, so... That's that. He got the plug for the hub undone, so I gotta clean that up and put the axle back in and silicone around here, even even though I have the gasket. So I'm gonna wire wheel that and clean it up now. <laughs> the rag said no. I gotta do the axle next.
temperature is starting to drop again. Yeah, it's getting cold out for sure. Feels really cold now. I know some people don't do this on their gaskets, but you know, do whatever you want on yours. I'll be honest with you, on my other truck, I don't even use a damn gasket. He gave me the gasket when I bought all the bearings. And, um, that's cool and all, but I usually don't use the gasket. I've had trouble with them leaking before. But, since I paid for it, because he gave it to me, the parts guy that is, We'll just schmooze a film of it on here. That ought to be enough, huh? Guy's baking a cake over here. So he's just filling the hub full of gear oil. He got the little plug out. It's just an Allen set screw. And we're gonna fill the hub. I just tightened up all those. They're definitely different sizes. So this one here, they look good. They're all the same, but I don't know. They've got different sizes in that one. So I'm probably gonna change those out. I gotta take this back off again in the spring and do bushings in the uh, S-cam. You guys have seen me do that on my other truck. Uh, I got a video on that, the S-cam bushings. I'm gonna do them on this one too because I did notice the S-cam was a hair, just a hair uh, loose. It'll be good for now, but at least this will stop the leak, hopefully. You know, dump trucks, right Randall? gonna have a dump truck you gotta like doing this stuff or you have to like paying somebody to do it right that's right dummy <laughs> i'm happy with the truck but you know it's a truck it's a used truck a couple things i'm gonna have to do it's like oh uh, cool. stem it is on the bottom over here so that one keep coming All right, we get this wheel cranked down, and then uh, check in because everybody's seen a wheel go on, right? All right, so that's gonna do it. We got the wheel torqued back on, all tightened up. Everything looks where it's supposed to be. Everything looks good. I put the uh, chrome lug nut covers back on, even though I do have to keep an eye on those lug nuts. If I start seeing rust trails bleeding out of there, I'll check them again, pull those, those just pull off. I'll check them again, pull those off, and, uh, uh, you know, in a couple days, and uh, just make sure that they're still tight. But so far, everything looks good. We were just loading some brush that he had. Um, it's the least I can do for him helping me out. I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna take a load of brush to the dump for him because uh, we had a storm here and the tree fell down. So, all right, so that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Say goodbye.